Welcome to session 33 of the Sphere of Power campaign. Um, you know, we've been at this for a while and there's still quite a ways to go. Uh, we're down two players today, but we should be okay. Um, at this point, having found what is believed to be the ruins of Bazaar, several members of the party have fallen into a sinkhole beneath a statue bearing a tablet said tablet bearing the final words of what was apparently once a magnificent place of luxury in this ancient land. Hindered so far only by spiders of enormous size, the group has made their way through a pair of broken doors into what once must have been a temple of some kind. Immediately beyond the first doors, and a barred set of ornate golden doors contained a hidden warning about some vanquished one. Meanwhile, exploring the southern half of the ruined structure, Another statue is found, or rather the remains of one, which also apparently bore a tablet. Thanks to Kaylee and Varric, they have assembled the crumbled remains and have managed to decipher a large central portion of its message, while the beginning and end appear to be lost to history. So with that, I believe the party has had some discussion. Um, let's get the uh, time and date out in the game channel. So, Alex, the only word that I can help with, I think the other stuff is pretty dead on, but I think that one that you have, J-I-U, is actually Genie, J-I-N-I. -I. Okay. Oh, which, which, doesn't make me, which doesn't make me feel very good. Behind those big golden doors could be the genie. And should it stay locked there? I don't know. Yeah, I was having trouble seeing. But that makes sense. Yeah, that could be that that could definitely be genie. Anybody else make that does that make nervous? Perhaps there's a clue in the title of today's session fate or destiny dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy all righty then so who's casmilly and dubon i have no idea i'm just wondering if those were names that you guys had heard before or i don't think so i'm getting the, I'm getting the sense that they're um uh, magic words in the vein of the um, the um, reverse gravity uh, altars. Cool. Okay. Alex, for the recording, if you don't mind, you want to go ahead and share what you have translated so far? Not really. <laughs> Somebody else can do it. <laughs> oh, but you have the most pleasing voice of this group. <laughs> This facing the great doors and passing the indecipherable hand before them speak, Saka al Dini, then approach the first and ask Al Sandila, so shall the way be open unto you. Speak then Kazmili and Duban, and these shall be within the, the hand's reach of the greatest of all. Portentous. Ominous. Yes, very strange. It's, uh, passing the right hand. That would make sense, contextually. 
Sorry, I didn't see that. I skipped that question mark. <clears throat> If I can type. That's so nice that you can edit things in Discord. I know. Mm -hmm. I know. I make use of it all the time. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I might have missed something my okay. wife called. Sherry Morgan. So um, yeah, let's um, go back to the other side because we've explored about as far as we can without proper excavation and extermination equipment. So what's, but yes. what's the description of the room? Is there any more explore, exploration yes. we've done in the room? Thank you, Dan. Yeah, we kind of rushed through this room because I wanted to give you guys a chance to have the inscription during the break. So let's make sure that we're spending enough time in here. Oh, that makes sense. Did, so we got that inscription done probably right after because I had to go in a hurry last week. Well, That's no, no, probably no. She actually. Don't remember. She translated it in the, well, the idea was that she was going to post it in there, but yeah, as we were all logging out, she actually posted the translation, but um, yeah, it, we didn't do much after you left. It just, I was kind of like, yeah, let's at least throw this out there because I know you, you know, better than spending a half hour, 45 minutes during uh, game time to translate it. Totally agree. Uh, yeah. I pushed it ahead just slightly, but yes, that definitely. Thank you for remembering that you guys still need to actually take a look at the room. So the walls of this 20 foot wide by 30 foot long room are lined with racks of bone scroll cases. Like those elsewhere in this building, the floor is tilted towards the Southwest and the West end of the room has filled entirely with sand. On the floor in the East end lies a statue broken into many pieces. The carved tablet that obviously once support, oh, carved table Sorry, that obviously one supported the statue upended in the rubble. Very good. And then I gave you the inscription, which just to share it again. That's the part of the tablet you were able to find. As you can see, it's missing pieces. But that basically translates, or you believe translates to what Alex just shared with everyone. Okay. Approach the first and speak. Then Vila. So shall the way we have speak then. Possibly in Dugan, and we shall be within the hands reach of the greatest of all. I'm going to say it takes you about 20 minutes to do the, the translation of the tablet. <laughs> Looking at the top of the words and the, the tops of those letters, guys, I wonder if that says you'll be in hand's reach of the greatest of all genies. Hmm. That's uh, what I think it is. J-I-N-I -J -I, and then the top of a Z. I am going to now ask each of you That's to roll in quite possible. an insight check for you and all characters you are controlling. Okay. So with that being the case, me as a player, I'm like, yeah, let's keep that door shut. Me as my in-game characters, the brothers are looking at each other going, hell yeah, getting ready to... <laughs> Oh, by the way, I'm going to hold off on um, awarding uh, currently accumulated XP until everyone is present, but I don't think that's going to okay. so gotcha. prevent any leveling. Good Lord, woman. You've definitely, you've got dice meant for a rogue. Yes, yes, I do have dice meant for a rogue. 
I don't know how the dice god, the digital dice gods seem to thwart almost everyone I know except for you. <laughs> I don't know. All right, so Hague, Barrack, Feckish. Miz isn't even down there, but Miz, if you would loaf, uh, roll for Jim, please, or for Redruth. Uh, what do you need me to roll, sorry? Insight for the Wiz. Mm. The Wiz is a wow. Or just a wall. <clears throat> yeah, sorry, I just yeah, noticed that Jim missing a couple of things on his uh, carriage sheet. Uh, I'll jump to you guys are going to hear me milling around. I'm going to try to do some trim while I'm listening and playing. Okay. No problem, but we might, uh, we might ask you to, or I might put you on mute. So uh, make sure you check if you start talking. Um, all right. So Redruth didn't do too bad. Kale Lily's always seems to be a separate case. The rest of you are just kind of clueless and going along with it. Um, Let's see. So it, it was Haig that was pointing out the, the recognition of the word genie, or that it looked like that that word is might be referencing a genie. Yes? Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the obviously well experienced uh, ranger and appropriate for her class um, reflects upon some legend lore and recalls that the term genie often is used to refer to a class of beings. Um, now, if you as a player wish to play out player knowledge um, as to the four subclasses, Alex, that is your choice, but Kaylee is at least aware of the fact that they, genies refer to usually one of four beings that are each tied to elemental energies fire earth air and water I believe though genie is refers to all of them or gin refers to all of them many people also only consider true genies to be the air versions of them and you would know that they are generally considered to be benevolent if not somewhat mischievous <laughs> So that is what your insight reminds you of. And you think it's important to share that with your comrades because you want to um, clarify that you don't know exactly what kind of gin this might be referring to. Yeah. Um, did we... I thought there was something in the lore saying that it was a fire... Wasn't there something in the lore way back saying it was fire? Yes. The, the being you are meant to prevent or stop or thwart is a fire a freak, a member of the uh, royal yes. set named Kalatarius. That, that much was shared with you by the, uh, the uh, Aman al the uh, the original guy who brought you here indirectly. Yeah, the Rakib. Aman al Rakib. Aman al Rakib. 127, 360. And also being the one that sent the letter originally to Elminster, whom you found, which you found in that cave with the uh, teleportation cubes. So he has definitely been the source of most of your knowledge of um, the, the prophecy to this point. Right. Though what he did not share with you and that you have figured out, and that I believe is pretty key, is that the keys to um, Martek's tomb so that you can gain access to his sphere of power, which is supposedly necessary to defeat Kalatarius, those keys apparently are the star gems, of one of which you have already found in the uh, runes of Turbahar. This all ringing bells? Oh, or am I, uh... and so what you're, so what you're probably saying is 
there's probably a genie of some sort inside that room protecting one of the stars. Yes? <laughs> Is that what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm trying to put all the it, things together and go, it, we're going to have to open this stupid door anyway. Yeah, but we should be very careful. Very careful. <laughs> Especially if the big bad is trapped inside there on purpose. And we're going to release him. Oh boy. Okay, yeah. That's what we're here for, right? So, so the magic door has no hand. This is my guess. The magic hit door has no handles. The, the big gold door, we couldn't get it open. The mad, so the tablet is telling us that we need to use the magic words to open the door. Agreed? Mm hmm And um, KLLE is recommending that we explore down the other passage before we um, attempt to use magic words. Good call. Good call. Anybody else? Any suggestions? Anything to add? No, everything sounds good. All good. Let's go exploring and then fight a big bad i think all right so let's see tokens should be unlocked so i believe you have room to move yep okay so i believe lighting has been working reasonably well on this map mm -hmm. i've actually been enjoying it uh, yeah, me too. It's pretty cool. All right, let's see. It reveals just enough, but not too much. And of course, as you head out of the room there, um, Kaylee and Haig, you notice that the, the body of the spider that's blocking the, uh, the, the tiny outlet, um, it, mm -hmm. It's been moved, it's been shifted. You can tell there's probably more spiders pushing at trying to push out from behind it. You're gonna guess it's not gonna last too much longer, but they're not about to bust through. Is there any sandstone okay. in the uh in the sand pile? Any in that large pile, pieces? Not so much, but inside the other room, that western wall absolutely has large chunks of sandstone that have broken apart as a result of the collapse. All right, I'm gonna grab a piece, biggest piece I can carry. Roll a and, uh, athletics check, please. Uh, in or out? Uh, roll it out. Um, that's going to be the times 50 is going to be the weight of the stone you're able to carry and move. Okay, give me one second because my one chart and one thing is over the other. Let's see. Not bad, 950 pound stone. Booyah. So maybe with a little assistance of my brother, we're gonna carry the stone just so I don't have to move both, Keith. Move the stone over and drop it in the hole. Right on top and squish the other spider. Hold on one second. I'm trying to address um, Alex's question. And yeah, that's a good point. I don't see it in here for some strange reason. Got the staff of rulership in there. Redruth is yeah, but I don't see the I don't see the I don't see the star gem. Unless it's the opal. Yeah, that sounds like that's it. Where is it? I probably didn't unhide it it's listed as huge opal fist size brilliant opal from almond ray's tomb yeah that's definitely it okay hold on a second though i have a funny feeling i may have given you a i copied item so it looked like it was identified when it wasn't um, okay so let me take a look at something uh, I was just looking through that and I didn't see the name I was looking for and that was the only suspicious item in my list. It 
There we go. Does that now show up properly? There we go. That's much better. Thank you. Interesting, though. It's still not showing up in the party inventory list, though, for whatever reason. You have to synchronize it. Rebuild party inventory. Gotta love it. There it is. Star of Mobile. All right. All right, so is everyone heading on down the highway? Down. After Haig dropped his rock in the hole. Rock has been dropped or over the hole. Yeah. Try and block the spiders, gain us a little bit more time. Yeah. Then, yeah, I think we're heading back he's on, that he's away. Down, he's on down the road. Don't you care so that we way. can feed alone? Won't you ease on down, ease on down the road? I like the whiz references this morning. Love it. Yeah, growing up on the East Coast, the whiz was a big thing, but on the West Coast, it, no one really knows about it beyond it being a Michael Jackson parody. Oh, really? Uh, when I'd say that probably is an unfair representation, but it certainly isn't as uh, prominent. It's kind of like Billy Joel. He's much more well known on the East Coast than he is on the West Coast. Mm, that's oh, that's a shame. Uh, what was that, Albie? I said, I smell bullshit, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is this another big empty room like the one we found on the other side? Strangely enough, yes, it is. Uh huh. Really? 15 foot diameter room entered through an archway in the south wall. Untracked dust covers the floor. By the way, is my audio coming through okay or are you guys straining? Your excellent. Memory? Good. Excellent. It's coming in excellent. Everybody sounds good to me. No, I'm going to be forgotten. I've been having mic issues lately, so I'm kind of trying to make sure that uh, I'm I'm talking enough into it without it violating my orifices. <laughs> no, that's I, uh, my nostril. Stay away from there. <laughs> I'm going to step away from so, my computer to let a, a compressor run. What is that parody? So I'll, be, I'm I'll still be listening. I'm suddenly thinking of some parody. I can't think of it. Yeah, mute is definitely required. <laughs> trying to think of some parody. I don't remember where it where it was. I'm thinking like Saturday Night Live, but honestly, it could have been a Muppet episode also where the microphone is just bouncing around from person to person, smacking them in the head, going up their nose, going in their mouth or in their ears and while they're trying to do an interview. I can't remember the rest of it, but that's suddenly flashing through my head. Uh, SNL. Yeah, <laughs> SNL. SNL. Life. SNL. Okay, so yeah, another empty room, another corridor that seems completely blockaded with debris and rubble. No small opening or anything. Um, I, I guess you could try to dig through it if you were interested, but that would definitely be a lengthy endeavor. I'd like to fly up to the ceiling of this enormous room and just kind of inspect the ceiling and the walls without disturbing the dust on the floor. Gotcha. And I have to remember to adjust the sizes on this thing, these rooms, to make sure that they match the scale of the map. All right. So, um, yeah, do a acrobatics check just to make sure you don't roll a one. Okay. Acrobatics coming up. Yeah. Mm, don't roll a one. 
it's not a one. <laughs> no, it's not a one. Definitely not one of your better roles, but really doesn't matter in this point. So, um, yeah, you're able to climb up through uh, the, the dome ceiling. Um, but yeah, there's no, no, no debris, no markings, no inscriptions, no form of lighting. This definitely seems to be a vacated room. What purpose it may have served beforehand, you have no idea. Very strange. Your best. Very, guess, very strange. Your best guess is that whatever might have been in here, possibly food stores, um, is probably, it, it's unlikely for a room to have been empty. So the only thing that has access to this has been the spiders. So you're guessing it had to be food stores or something else that the, the spiders have consumed over the time that it's been underground. Okay. Well. That's just a we've best done, guess. Yeah, we've done exploring. Unless we want to attempt to do some digging, um, we can try some magic words. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Yeah, go for it. So once again, you find yourselves in front of the ornate and beautiful double golden doors that are definitely not featureless, but are handleless. So I'll have all of you guys gather around in the foyer outside the double doors. I'm gonna nudge the translator as I slowly draw my sword, or I've already got the sun sword out. So I'll have uh, Varric slowly pull his mace out, be ready for whatever's coming behind the door. Now I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look over at Feckish and Red Dress because um, these are magic words. I do not, do not want magic words. They make me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, what a perfect time to sucker in the wizard to doing this is when his player is not here. Aha. <laughs> <laughs> the, the now currently frail wizard. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know about, about frail, but definitely uh, tenuous now or tentative. Squishy. Well, the wizard looking at you. He's always lot. been squishy. And was it looking at you lot, looking at him and going, I can see what a cat stays outside now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm looking at I'm looking at it at, at our three magic user three magic users. Like this is this is magic. I don't do magic. <laughs> okay, well I, I leave it up to the uh the four of you present or the three of you present to decide who's going to to go and if you want to sucker those who are not present that is your prerogative well if you want to the sucker magic. the characters of those who are not present that is your prerogative. The, mage, the mage would be the one dealing with the magic the cleric's the one that deals with prayer right so that takes me out of the magic aspect <laughs> realistically if jim was here he would have gotten patient and the character would have just done it <laughs> yep yeah, yeah he would. let me uh let me get to the computer. The compressor's full. I am going to get the brothers to flank the door once. Hold on a second. Yeah, there we go. Yes, thank you. Perfect. And we are. Like yes, and we are ready to rock. We are I guess holding. Are you, we are ready. Are you staying actions. back there in the corridor? No, he's ready to run out, not deeper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, We're gonna Kaylee ready. Is ready to um, shoot whatever um, 
seems like it might be hostile. Well, I'm because close to the exit. That's I kind of what she does. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to wait for aggressive action, but I'm not necessarily going to swing when the door opens, but I'm going to wait for aggressive action. Yeah. Yeah. I just look at everyone and then just roll my eyes and go, guess it's me. <laughs> I'll just uh, <laughs> say the magic words, whatever the pretty words are. I think they were safe first. Hold on. Be right with you. It says speak first. I'll... No. I'll th- Facing the great... Facing the great doors and passing the right hand before them, bef- uh, speak Saka al Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. So face the doors and wave your hand and say the magic words Saka al Jimmy. I should like do Mr. That. P. Saka al Jimmy. I just, 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 All right, so Redruth walks up to the door, waves his right hand in front of the doors themselves, speaks the words. Who's going to pronounce them? Having evil dead flashbacks. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Just to let you know, folks, I was actually waving my left hand at home, so I probably got it wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. All right, if you're doing your left hand, then nothing happens. So eventually you figure <laughs> you out, like okay, Mr. maybe I should try the right hand. Then as you say... And you've got to do it like a Mr. T accent. Stucker, Al Gini. <laughs> <laughs> Presuming he gets the right hand and the pronunciation correctly. Suddenly the doors... <laughs> oh God, the doors begin to glow. And a hum is heard coming from all around. And with that, the doors slowly open forward. Oh, boy. And I believe you can now open those doors. <laughs> oh, yeah. Brothers are going to creep slowly. I'm going to ask Redrith to throw some dancing lights in there. I shall throw some lovely dancing lights out there for them. Uh, do you, Where do you want them? Do you want them uh, hovering where the statues are, or do you want them hovering quite close to you? How, how far in would you like them hovering? You can see the, yeah, you can see the statues inside. Let's, let's drop them in front of the statues. Yeah, I should do that. Please and thank you. Tokens are locked. Uh oh. Oh boy. Kayla is going to creep closer because she's intrigued. The walls of this 40 foot wide hall and its ceiling fade into the darkness made deeper by the black marble that has been used in its construction. Three pairs of huge statues stand sentry with their backs flush against the side walls. The first pair, 30 feet from the doors. So tall are they that their heads are not visible in the darkness, and the staff each holds is as tall or taller. The room, like all the others encountered, slants towards the southwest. (laughs) Okay, I'm always going to gesture Red Hat forward um, like next (laughs) there are Uh, more magic words (laughs) I'm not getting any of the light from the dancing lights I was kind of waiting for those 
Oh yeah, that's because um, it only works the dancing light. Oh, okay. Light. Um, the the way we're putting up the markers does not actually generate light. Actually, if you click on red dress, you can see. Yeah. So. Or me, you can click on KLE and see too. Okay. Because. Yeah. Remember, we did set up these markers for dancing lights, and they actually worked pretty well. Okay. Yes, we did. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to creep, I guess. I can't. Okay, there we go. Um, don't go too far. Don't go too far. Put the lights can go far, but don't go too far. We have to say the magic words. Okay. I think I went 20 feet. So it's two squares prior to the statues. Yeah. Right about there. As you approach within 10 feet of the first pair of statues, a thin veil of blue silk appears between them. As sheer as the <laughs> finest mist, this veil appears to hang between the staves the statues bear. Oh, I want to throw something through it. <laughs> All right. The next words are, then approach the first and speak Althandila. Yeah, so Redruth is probably going to um, come forward and speak the magic words. <laughs> then that is what uh, you would do. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'll go over there and I'll basically uh, look over my shoulder at them all and then uh, this time slowly raise my right hand and then point to my right hand and go, let's go the right hand this time. And then say the magic words. And what is the, what is or are those magic words? I have already forgotten them. <laughs> all Thandila. I think they're all Thandila. Yeah. All Thandila it is then. If I pronounce <gasps> that right. <wrong. laughs> ah, funny English, bear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought we moved him up. All right, so he waves his right hand. He speaks the word, but nothing happens. Nothing happens. Uh, what I'll do then, being nothing happened, I'll reach in my pocket and pull out uh, what kind of coins he got on him. Uh, I'll pull out uh, Electrum piece, and I would just uh, flick it through the mist to see what it does to the coin. Electrum. Oh, piece. you said electrum piece, right? Yeah. Interesting choice. Um, so you toss it at the the blue curtain. As it passes through the blue curtain you hear what sounds like a crackling sound. And as it lands on the ground beyond it, it shatters with a tinkle. Ooh. That's no bueno. Well, I'm not sure if these uh, defense mechanism is to keep something out or to keep something in or a bit of both. What do you guys think? And girls? 
Well, uh, well going by the, we're supposed to approach several. It says yeah, then is, approach the first. Okay, I'm I'm wondering if we might not be close enough, and we might all have to be closer. I'm looking at the and word. I'm looking at the word and seeing if we have the word wrong. Yeah, we might have the word wrong too, which is it Al Than or is it Al Ham? I don't know. I Al couldn't Ham. see it. Genie was the I. So that's the I. Al is it? I wonder if it's Al Hamdila. Then I will try get a little bit closer and uh, say uh, Al Hamdila and wave my right hand. And with that, the curtain disappears with almost the sound of a rapidly thawing icicle. Good job, gang. But apparently pronunciation is key. Cool. Uh, do you have another piece of Electrum just in case? Uh, I, I got plenty. <laughs> Are you speaking in your native tongue? <laughs> Maybe. Let's see what mine comes up. Yeah. You guys don't recognize that? No, sorry. Keith. Uh, uh, sorry, Keith. There's a glitch on my hat and I just lost... Uh... Jim's character sheet, unfortunately. Uh oh. <clears throat> we lost the wizard. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of key at the, at the we, moment. We had one job, and what did we do? We lost the wizard. Interesting. <laughs> it's not doing the translations for the BM anymore. What? Yep. Oh, auto translations? Yeah, normally it lets the DM see any of the languages. Now it's just it's showing me the stuff and it just tells me who understands it. Huh. But it doesn't tell you what it says. Well, That's weird. Mine just says sup, Broham. Fekish is uh is oh. probably uh his was his is yeah, he's not doing it through the language thing. That's why. Right. Thanks, Alfie. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if it's if it's Star Trek, dude, sorry. I was no. a big Trekkie. I didn't mind the movies, but I just didn't get into it like I did Star Wars. Do you say nah? It's not? No, it's not. I'll give you two more guesses. All right, so as soon as Redreth walks through the first pair of statues, a curtain of yellow satin appears between the second pair of statues. Hanging Ooh. between the staves, they bear. The curtain is translucent, but opaque enough to conceal all but the vague outlines of things beyond it. A sharp smell assails the nostrils. Sharp smell. Sulfurish? No. Acid. Um, insight check. Um, from rangers, elves, and dwarves, which I think still only applies to two of you, Redreth and Kaoli. Uh, Dick, if you share oh, the couch sheet again, please. Uh, give me a moment. Where did my character sheet go? 
for my party sheet here. Fighting. Yep, it does that a lot, unfortunately. Uh, main ledger. No matter how much screen space you have available for you to use, no matter how many monitors you have it on, you always need everything more. always hides. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just uh, got a bunch of errors in Fantasy Grounds. Uh oh. Hopefully, we're not going to crash. Hopefully. Okay, no additional information is revealed at this point unless uh, Red Dreth is successful. Did you get his character sheet, Ms? Uh, yes. Uh, how you that, play... That's when it crashed, is when I dragged it over. Or correction, it's when I got the errors, is when I dragged it over. Yeah, I, I wonder if it would work better if you uh, released his character sheet and then I'd just click on it and just take control of it that way. I wonder if that way bugging out a bit on my end. That's probably not a bad idea. So let's see. Where is it? Red Dreth. And by try. Owner cleared. Okay. Kind of a Swedish smell. S W E E T, not S W E D. Still thick acid. <laughs> well, I'll pull out a. Uh another electron piece and I'll just uh, flick it through the mist to see what, it, uh, what kind of effect it had on the coin. Uh, so you toss the coin through, or Redra to tosses the electron coin through the curtain, and as it hits the curtain, a bright bluish flash engulfs it um, and causes the hair on all of, um, so Vague, uh, Hague, Varric, and Redreth. The hair on your neck, the hair on your head all stands on end as this thing just flashes flying through the curtain. Um, the next word is going to be Bismilli or Bismilla. And ju what just to point out, at this point, Redreth does make the connection that, ah, we're smelling what we call ozone I'm not sure that they call it the same thing in forgotten realms but he's like ah yes the, elect the smell of electricity oh mm. next word is um casmilly uh what was that word again sorry casmilly Hi, I'll raise my voice hand and say you might, you might want to use um Haig's translation. Oh. Misty. Um uh, let me make sure. Yeah, I think it's I think it's bit uh yeah. Oh wait, is that a C? But I was gonna say I, I had Bismilli or Bismilla, but the C Biz, Bismilla. Yeah, because upper has that Y with the dot above it, upper. So I was trying to do the uh sound. We'll presume it takes you two or three tries, but you find that Bismilla is the word that actually does manage to deactivate the second curtain. Okay. I just look at my dry friend while he's trying to figure out the pronunciation, while he's waving his hand trying to explain to me. And I'm thinking, I went, and I go, see, see, you can, you can, you can bring these things down for yourself. <laughs> I 
lights seem to be able to move freely in between everything. So we give ourselves a magic shade and we're good. So. Well, then the last one, I agree with Alex Dubon. As soon as you pass through the first, uh, the second curtain, a shimmering curtain of flame orange velvet appears between the third pair of statues, appearing to drape in folds from something suspended between the staves the statues bear. The velvet reflects golden yellow and deep red in the highlights and shadows. Nothing can be seen beyond the curtain. Well, I guess this one probably has a flame property. What do you guys think? Probably. Makes sense. I look at uh, Hayes and then uh, look at my vase and give a little nod towards the statue. Is he going to speak the magic word? Being Hague not stepping up, I'm like, roll my eyes, guy. I guess you guys haven't laughed with me trying to pronounce these magic words. <laughs> he just got her notes out and he's <laughs> he just I'm just looking at her like... uh, translation. <laughs> I'm just looking at you going, you're the wizard. <laughs> just remind me to warm you all up later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what was that uh, last word again? Dubon. Sorry, I keep having yeah, I keep having to unmute. Dubon. Dubon, and I wave my right hand while I glare it at them. Give me just a moment. All right, so you go with the last word, which um, one more time, who's pronouncing it? How are you, how are you pronouncing it? Dubon. And that successfully removes the third. Just to let you know, when I said that last word, I stuck my back leg out and just waved my hand in a fancy way. We're <laughs> <laughs> just getting theatrical. Let's see. Hold on one second. So with that curtain down. You were able to finally see the full extent of this 120 foot long, 60 foot ceiling room. Statues are 50 feet tall that reach the ceiling. And against the back wall of the hall is what appears to be an altar of white marble. Centered on the white marble platform lies a huge black gem, its curved surface highly polished. The white marble of the altar against the rear wall begins to pulse as though with an inner light. 
The only thing on the altar top is a fist-sized polished stone of midnight black with a brilliant white star dividing it into six wedges. Now it can be seen that the pulsing light covering the white marble emanates from within the stone star, as though in time with a beating heart, the light of the star brightens, flows out through the gem, and washes the marble in its brilliance. So deep is the black of the stone itself that it appears to be without depth. Ooh, so I, we're probably all just staring at it like pretty. Yeah. Big spooky looking yeah. egg. Okay. Um, Kale is going to creep forward and see what happens when she gets closer. <laughs> Good, then I can blame you. <laughs> She's gonna turn and look back at you guys like, are you coming? And you guys are probably staring back at her like, go. You should know oh, by just now. Wait. I'm still waiting for when you touch the stone to swing at whatever comes out. Yeah. Well, you should know by now my uh, fire ball can reach multiple ranges, so it's all good by me. I'm gonna turn back and look at you guys again and just kind of shrug and step all the way up to the altar. I'm thinking from where I'm at, I have a good vantage point to watch the fireworks. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Sorry, gang. You have to bear with me for a moment. I want to try to look up something. What do I get a feeling uh, as soon as she lays a hand on it? We're going to get this deep beaming voice who says, Who dare touches my nipple? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not touching it yet. I'm just, I'm just approaching it. <laughs> Is it me or did you say nipple? Yeah, I said nipple. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> who dare touch my nipple? <laughs> Gosh, why am I having such a problem finding this? For it. Now, sometimes the, the books just uh, the books inside Fantasy Grounds just don't behave the way you want them to. No, no, they don't. This is where I prefer having hard books available and just open to the page where I know it's at. Yeah, because you probably uh, put a sticky note flag on the page. Yep. A color coded sticky note flag on the page when you were prepping. If you could see Keith's books, those things could fucking fly. <laughs> <laughs> I would not be surprised. In fact, I would be surprised if it wasn't that way. <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, for crying out loud. All right, screw this. I'm going to go grab my DMG. I'll be right back. Yep. Tag. Have it open before I even sat down. Right. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> That's why I like my hard copies so much. <laughs> Digital is great because it's more portable, but there's nothing like the hard copies. It's just better in so many ways. Yes, indeed. Indeed it is. Uh, there it is. later just want to make sure i don't forget it all right so you approach the star gem obviously it is i mean hell it's got a star on it it's the same it, size. yeah it's the same size as the uh opal that you guys picked up okay so yeah, um, unless you get rolling a one, unless you're all rolling a one, you're all pretty sure this is your second star gem. But nothing else different seems to happen by approaching it. It's still pulsing with light, going not completely dark, but very faint on what would be you know, the, the downbeat of the heartbeat, and then it pulses up again and brightens and washes the altar as it described. So, dumb question for those who are not here for the first star gem. What happened when you touched that one? Nothing spectacular, I don't think. All right, then. Just check. <laughs> Other than that, I dropped it. <laughs> yeah, that okay. was interesting. You shouldn't be the one handling the star gem. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah the first one i dropped it nearly lost it but i i caught it you, you got a good chance to do some real flying that's for sure yeah like i'd never been flying before but you know i dropped it so i had to go nose diving after it <laughs> i i totally pictured you just bouncing that back and forth between your hands oh uh, 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 oh shit yeah <laughs> Yeah. Okay, oh, so I'm goes. gonna reach out. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna reach out and touch this one. Okay. Reach out, reach out and touch someone. And if nothing happens when I touch it, I'm gonna try to pick it up. Nothing happens when you touch it. it you do notice that it does it, it's not hot or warm, but it's definitely not cool to the touch that you would expect a stone sitting underground for a thousand years to feel like. And okay. It, it, it's got a bit of an inner warmth to it. Just a mild one, you know, a lukewarm, but it's like I said, it's definitely not cool. But okay. it so certainly is not loose and does not come um, from the altar freely. Okay. Interesting. I'm going to have to examine the stone and the altar and see if I can, you know, find anything that looks like it might be a mechanism to release it. While she's taking a look at and the it, others are just staring at me. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, while she's looking at it, are any of the rest of you going to come up and take a look at it? You've obviously seen her touch it without her turning into a zombie or a charred, charred husk. Sorry, I was also doing. Okay, we heard the sorry, and then you went back on mute. Busy doing something. So, Hag, do you want them to move up, Dan? Oh, I'm still on mute. Jeez, no, now, you, now we can hear you. 
I reached down and hit the mute button and thought I, and started talking again, going, hey, I was doing trim nailing and I was trying to talk and I was on mute. And I'm going, you guys still can't hear me. <laughs> uh, is there any other clues in the tablet? <clears throat> oh, boy. <sighs> Probably should make that altar a little smaller on the map. It's a pretty wide altar. That's big enough for the Knights of the Round Table. <laughs> Well, are you going to put some effort into it, or were you just casually trying to pick it up? No, I'm going to... Um, well, if I don't find any um, anything that looks like a mechanism, then I guess I'll have to try harder to pick it up. Yep, no mechanisms, no inscriptions, no other clues. So if you're going to try a little harder, go ahead and roll a athletics check. Let's see, we could also try to, oh, that's a good roll. Yeah, I would say that's probably sufficient for uh, the following. The stone comes free all of a sudden. The pulsating light seems to flow back into the midnight black of the stone. Leaving and she the drops Huh? <laughs> and she drops it. Uh, Kayla Lee, if that is your choice, are you going to, or are you going to sit there and look at it? No, I'm gonna. I'm gonna examine it. Okay. So the pulsating light seems to flow back into the midnight black of the stone, leaving only the stars a glimpse of its former presence. A tiny bit of dull gray metal clings to the base of the gemstone, and a faint wisp of incense wafts from the stone setting. As from afar, a guttural chuckle flows forth. <laughs> of course! Until, like a wave cresting against a breakwater, it crashes through the hall. The laughter's crest past, only the echoes remain. <laughs> This is the point in Saturday morning cartoons where it goes to a commercial. Do we need a commercial break? Oh, I'm uh, good. I was going to say now is a good time <laughs> for us to take our halfway break. So I am going to go. Cool, ahead and that's take good this time to uh, the party sheet inventory. It should be identified as a huge opal. I don't think you've identified exactly which star gem it is, but you know it is. And with that, yeah, let's take a 10 minute break. We'll meet back here at quarter two. Right up. Oh boy. And uh, we'll go ahead and do a ready check. Well, let me take. I take it the other circle is uh, for you, Kate. For old uh, Billy J. I'm sorry, what was that, Miss? I take it the blank circle is because uh, you normally have it a uh, bank brown open twice, don't you? I'm confused. I normally have what? <laughs> I say you normally have fancy ground running twice on two uh, different PCs, right? Oh yeah. So yeah, you're seeing my second PC, which is that's why you have Billy Joe in the in the party. Yes. Because otherwise, I wouldn't see any of the maps. Actually, Billy Joe's not on this map. Maybe they finally fixed that. Yay. Or no, wait a minute. Is he on the other? Did we lose Billy Joe? <laughs> no, 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 Billy Joe is on the map. He's just hidden out all the way in the back of the, the top by Miz. He's hanging out with the dude with the spoon. Spoon! Oh, what was his name again? Prit. Prit the gnome. Prit all right. The gnome.
Yeah, just a little disturbing. So who are we missing? That's a good question. Probably uh, Dan. Dan, you haven't checked your ready box, have you? Are you still out there? He's probably still on mute. Talking to himself. Yeah, that doesn't We've help. All done it. Of course, just the opposite for those of us that have done radio where you're talking and you don't think that you're live on mic. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just a question for Alex. I take it you hold in uh, both gems now, right? Yeah. In, in not like one of those uh, movie scenarios, is it, where if uh, both of the gems touch, something happens? We need all five. Uh, then we'll something go- might happen. We're going the uh, Captain Planet route. Okay. <laughs> By our powers combined. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So let's see. We got that. We got that. All right. So what are you guys going to do? How are you going to respond? What is going to be your next course of action? Probably roll an initiative. Oh. So this gem is um, very clearly attached to some kind of stopper or dar lid or something. There was a little piece of metal on the underside of it that apparently served as its setting, and it preferred to stay attached to the gem instead of the altar. So in its place is a tiny little hole where the wisp of smoke emerged from. Yeah, um, that's not good. Um, no idea what we uh, release. Um, the doors might have a clue. Yeah. Yeah, I get the they feeling. They did warn you. Well, and I'm wondering the whole we part. She was the one that pulled the gem from the altar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't like you best. actively what just mean that gem. <laughs> I haven't said nothing. I've just been pretty much tooling along, watching everybody else going with what they're doing. Uh, I, I just look at uh, Alex character with wide eyes and go, fill the hole, fill the hole, fill the hole! <laughs> Get back! Am I missing anything, guys? Uh, just waiting for you to hit the ready check, but uh, yeah, we're just kind of uh, contemplating the uh, the significance of the, the wisp of smoke that just emerged from the uh, the gem setting. Yeah. Um, that's a bit of a problem. <laughs> um, yeah. No idea who the vanquished one might be, but I think I might have just set him loose. Um, well, compared to the grief that some of the other characters have added to the party, I, I think you're due for an, an episode. Yeah, it's my turn, right? Exactly. <laughs> hey, just to let you know, the cat causes no problem whatsoever. All I do is sleep <laughs> on the job. That's it. Well, then it's your turn next, obviously. <laughs> Thank you. So, something's coming down. <laughs> Something's coming down. I think it's high time to go see what the cat's up to. Yeah. We got what we came for and done some, so I think we should um, skedaddle. Again, this we thing. (laughs) And so, what are you saying? You were you, you weren't here? Oh, I was here, but I didn't touch the stone. 
So, Ms., just so you know, um, their um, absence barely lasts two hours, so none of your caveats actually triggered for conditions. Thank you, the team, right? Fair enough. So you're just kind of waiting up top for them. The sun's just beginning to um, get strong um, as they reemerge from the hole. I just look at them all and just go, meow. <laughs> So again, though, it is morning. The sun's just getting to uh, get strong. Um, the cavern. You guys have off. to be back by now, right? What was that? Oh, we just lost Hag. We lost somebody. Yeah. All right. Well, hope he'll make he makes it back. So as I was saying, yeah, it's um, probably a lot cooler down below, unless you guys want to decide to head on out in the open sun, or you have some other plans. Well, do we have <clears throat> do we have a direction after this tomb, like towards the map? The oasis. The so how long have I been kicked out of the meeting and not known it? Uh, you just dropped long. about 30 seconds ago, and we heard you come well, back. I, I, I dropped because I twice I came back in and going, If you guys can, you guys hear me? I can't hear you. Yeah, and, we heard uh, you. I guess you were unable to hear us, though. No, I couldn't hear anything. I thought that, yeah, anyway, I'm well, back. You, you did the right thing, you didn't miss much. Just basically everyone deciding to head on out, and that it is pretty much early morning. Um, so discussion as to what's uh, what you're going to do next but yeah it, okay, it's cool. a consensus that whatever Kayla Lee did just now um, it was her turn to screw the party <laughs> <laughs> like I said perfect she pulled the gem I can blame her yep <laughs> <laughs> um if we go below <clears throat> the camels can't come with us Can they? No, they wouldn't be. You wouldn't be able to get them in and out without something creative. And you know, at their levels, it, it's it is possible if you really want to think of something. I'm not going to say it's impop. It's not going to happen. But that being said, I should point out that there is some degree of shade available from the statue, but that's about it. Okay. Um. Well, we usually stay in the hut. Um. Yeah, but you're not going to fit the the, uh, the camels in there. That being said, the camels are used to hanging out in this weather or climate. Yeah, so, I mean, that's what usually happens is we have the hut for us and the camels just kind of get tethered close to the hut. Um, so, I hesitate to try to take the camels down because then if the spiders attack and we decide we need to retreat, then we can't make a speedy retreat um with the camels um oh, so yeah, i'm that, going to recommend that, that's going to be a, a close to an impossibility i'll agree with that so i'm going to recommend that we um move some distance away from the hole and set up camp for the day agreed down with that And I, I'm suggesting to move away from the hole because we don't want to accidentally make it bigger and have it drop, have the ground drop out from under us again. Yeah, that did hurt a few of you. It was a bumpy ride down. It was not particularly pleasant. Nope, nope. Well, in preparation to leave, I'm going to collect my rope now that everybody is up out of the hole. And yeah, let's boogie. So we don't have to go that far. Boogie or, are we boogieing or napping? We're going to get some distance we're, between us and the hole and then take a nap. Yeah, we're moving away from the hole so that um, we don't oh. accidentally make it bigger and have it drop out from under us. But we're not really going anywhere. We're just finding and camping. That spot. Hole. I, was thinking, I was thinking you guys meant inside the temple 
uh, away from the spider hole. No, 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 no. We, we've gone back up to the surface and rejoined our cat. Um, and we're discussing where to make camp. All right, so let's see. Any preparation you guys want to do before a long rest? Any healing dice? Any changes to your memorize spells, um, et cetera, and so forth. It looks like Varric and Haig could use some patching up before we get our rest. Yes. I will need about three minutes. Not a problem. I can give you those. Meanwhile, do some dice rolling. Because the way healing works, you have to be within um, your level's worth of hit points for you to become fully healed with a long rest. So spend hit dice, use spell slots. I really love the way these nested tables work. <laughs> they are rather convenient sometimes, aren't they? <clears throat> All right, so in preparation, Redrith presumably casts his hub again. Um, you sit down actually for a, I don't want to quite say a nice breakfast, but you still have some relatively fresh food available from Turbacar. Um, and it's probably the last of the fresh food and you, you've got time. So, um, you know, the, the dates are still relatively moist. Um, you guys brew up some of the, the kavi that they, uh, they enjoy over here. Kavi, I think that's the way it's pronounced. Kavi, if you're French. K-A apostrophe V-I. Needless to say, coffee, but you gotta have some cultural flair, you know? Mm hmm. Now you sound Italian. Well, it was supposed to be ethnic, not necessarily regional. Right. Yeah, I gotta be careful, otherwise, I'll be labeled as politically incorrect, you know? <laughs> you never. <laughs> no parodies allowed. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Okay. All right. It looks like we're all healed up enough for a long rest to finish the job. So. All right. Oh, I don't know why I did that. Uh, you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You're ready for the long rest? I'm ready. Yeah. All right. One long rest triggered. Oh. And we get XP too. I think he was saying he was holding off for the XP, right? Yeah, but it gave it to us anyway. It looks like oh. that automatically adds it during the um, uh, long rest now. So um... uh, no, that's a that's an extension um, setting. You can actually change it. Um, That's fine. I don't mind it. My only concern was making sure that people who weren't here would get it, and it looks like it distributed everything. So. Yeah, it distributes it to any character that is in the party sheet. It just in the party sheet. So as long as they're still in the party sheet, then everybody will get it. I bought these with somebody in mind. All right. So let's see, one set with a wish was for um, encounter rewards and the other set was for quest rewards. So and I, believe, I believe all of those are actually, can you see? Oh, today. oh you don't see the XP sheet, day. do you, as characters? Nope, we do not see the XP sheet. That's kind of a shame, but no biggie. 
So at least you're fully caught up now. And let's see. So we're looking at roughly everyone. Everyone's in the low 17,000s. That means you're all just under 5,000 away from seventh level. Yep. Um, the it. brothers need to clear out their wounds. Wounded brothers, not good. Yeah, you, yeah, wasn't there something we got? There's something standard we get, right? It's not, healing isn't only hit dice. Isn't there something like you get your level plus something? You get your level back or level, I think it's level. Okay, so that's that's still good enough. So that zeroes you out. Right. You guys have, have no wounds left. Right. It will not. Let me click on it. Anyone else notice any effects that need to be removed? Um, is Redruth, if Redruth is gonna um, keep his mage armor on, he needs to mark off the spell slot. I will remove it. Um, I don't have, I don't think I have full control of Varric because I keep trying to put his hit points to zero and it's not working. I can probably fix that. Yeah, that color is really bad. I got to remember to spend a little time trying to dig into the settings. I'm sure I can override that with a hex code somewhere. But that dark green on the gray is just not kind. Yeah, well, the white on the light gray, um, when you expand the excess uh, in the combat tracker, is not happy either. Uh, unfortunately, well, let me uh, tamper with uh, Jim's character in the combat tracker. What about what about Redrath? Uh, I cannot turn off the mage armor uh, because it, yeah. No, Warcaster. Bye. There we go. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. No problem. All right. So, um, relatively uneventful rest. However, as the end of the day comes on, um, well, you, you hit full rest about the heat of the afternoon, so you guys decide to take a, take it easy for another hour or two. And as you mm -hmm. do so, um, just around sunset. Um, can we mute the background noise? One second. Thank you. I should have jumped on that, so no worries. Um, She's smiling too. All right. So towards the end of the day, as the sun is setting and it's just beginning to cool down, you actually are greeted with a situation. Not much. Of, of course, a, we are. Not much of a situation. Um, at this point, you've been in the desert enough that you've become used to what is commonplace in the desert, and one of those common events seems to be the Dupari Riders. Um, they seem to do a pretty good job of covering the desert and, um, you know, supposedly to help out their, their brethren as well as guarding the ancient religious sites. But um, this isn't the first group of um, Dervish scouts um, that have uh, appeared while you've been traveling through the desert. Um, so you recognize them from far off, rel or from relatively far off, and notice three of them coming up on um, on Camelback. And uh, needless to say, because of you know their willingness to help as well as defend their their cultural heritage, um, they they approach enough and come on up and greet you and you know want to basically see uh, what's going on. And we can play this out if you want and want to try to have a discussion with them and do some NPC interaction. But uh, for the most part, uh, this is just a, oh, hi, how you doing? Thanks for restoring the river. We got work to do if you don't need help. That sounds fine to me. I mean, we know where we're going next, I think. 
Do we? Are you sure? I thought we were heading for the oasis. Because that's one of the places marked on the map. Uh, I'm just asking because I might have missed that part. I'm not making any presumptions, but let me see. <laughs> As the DM, I don't want to pretend I know more than I should. <laughs> well, when it comes to player decisions, that's really important because I don't want to be, oh, like, didn't you guys decide to go kill the big, big bad guy? Oh, no, you don't know about him yet. Hmm, that's a problem. Right. <laughs> we have now been able to uh, match the geography of the land to the scroll map. And... The scroll map? The sacred. Yeah. Uh, how is our uh, food and water supply? Um, adequate um, if we head for the o oasis next. Sound like a plan? So I think that's what we intend to do is head for the o oasis. So follow the currently still dry riverbed back to where it joins up with the trail and the riverbed that should be filling. Um, and head for the oasis. Now there's a spot marked on the map as acre. And there's a spot marked on the map as sacred pool. And I'm not sure yet which is this oasis that they're talking about. Probably it's the sacred pool, but this other spot marked on the map might also be important. Sorry, every time you say Oasis, I just think of the British band going to be there waiting for us. <laughs> <laughs> Today is going to be the day that they're going to take it back to you. Come on, sing the chorus, Miz. I wonder if I weren't filling my face with biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> and after all, you're my wonder wall. Yeah, that wasn't too bad, Dan. Not bad at all. No, that was me doing voice. it poorly on purpose. When I sing, I actually do sound like a cat uh, dying. <laughs> Music is my life. I've uh, been in several bands and yeah, I love music. All right. So down here uh let's see at this point you're running into the river flowing down the channel and heading back towards um bazaar so presumably you're following the riverbed back north staying close to the water source um yeah watching out for those tentacle creatures
We love those. So just to make for acclimation, the overland map where that Y is in the riverbed is the same as the Y in the scroll map. Or am I reading that wrong? Say that one more time. So looking at the two maps, the overland map and the scroll map. Yes. And I'm assuming what we've been following is the riverbed. Yes. So there's a Y in both. Is that accurate? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm just. Did it so crash I'm... again? Maps. Yeah, you're back. Can you hear us? Yeah. What the heck? Yeah, I did have to manually mute you again at one point, but um, we, we didn't have to boot you, but I did see you fall out again about 30 seconds ago. So you're back on mute, by the way. Uh, gremlins, as Alex would put it. Yes, uh, they seem to be. Gremlins! Uh, they seem to be attacking us this morning. Yes, All right. when in doubt, blame the gremlins. So I don't want to give away more than you know. But apparently, you know, let let Alex and Dan and Ms. comment further. But as far as you guys have been able to figure out, you should be coming from this place here. That quite obviously looks like bizarre. I don't think I'm giving anything away by by saying that. No, we've translated that before. Yep. So and this is the actual overland map, which, you know, you guys came from the, the pyramid over here. Um, oh, wait a minute. I know what I forgot. Hold on. Da, da, da. Da, da, Look da. on the layer to the river. Yeah, that. So as you can see, there pretty much is a Y in roughly the same directions and shape as what you see on the scroll map that you were given by um, Amon. So you guys take care of dinner, you pack up, you head on north, and relatively early on, as a matter of fact, well, let's see. Um, let's look back there again. Actually, it's going to probably be just around midnight when you are at roughly what you believe to be this location um, on the map. Um, hey, just double check something. Let's see. Yeah, so Haig being in the lead on the map, and again, remembering that the, the left half is those in front and the right half are those coming through the back. <clears throat> Haig actually is the only one to notice a circular depression in the sand and picks it up as more than likely being a sinkhole, which um, you and the rest of you and the camels would have walked right into. Oh, glad he caught it. But actually, between that and um, several of the points that uh, Dan made um, in deciphering the magic words, um, giving him an inspiration point, also for Ooh. taking care of his brother today. So yeah, your your character has been critical today, Dan. So um, gracias. It needs to be noted. <laughs> But with that, you obviously avoid that. And let's see, where did I put it?
Oh, bummer. Is there an easy way? No, 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 no. You know, in the party sheet where the XP is listed, it'd be really nice if the DM could just manually add some XP to each individual one from that screen. So I'm going to try to remember to create a experience reward for that. It's not that much, but I don't want them to build up. So anyway, it's, that makes you to just about midnight. Let's come back and double check here as you continue to move on. No, one, one. And you have an event free night moving further down the river until dawn arrives. Ah. Make camp and continue in the evening. I think that sounds right. Is that what you guys want to do? Any prep changes or anything else? No. I'm good. All right. Um, yeah, it's just about 12 hours later. You guys are making good use of the nighttime travel. It's not too exhausting. Uh, next day, anything else happening? So you guys, just to make sure, you guys are resting until the sun goes down, not just waiting eight hours, correct? Mm -hmm. Until it's cool enough to travel, really. Right. I think, I think what we figured out is that it doesn't start to get hot during the day, like really hot until like 10 or 11. So it would be like 10 or 11 till like somewhere between six and eight. Well, I can't have you march more than 12 hours a day without having um, ga uh, game impacts. Child labor laws, that's what I think. So yeah, technically you're only supposed to be going eight hours, but you know, it, you're traveling at night, so I'm letting it go 12 hours to you know, give us additional distance and account for the fact that you are traveling at night. <laughs> but more than 12 hours, I think we have to start um, actually factoring in exhaustion. Whatever makes the DM happy. I just want to make sure that it, it appears applicable. All right, so um, you head back out again at 5.30. Uh, north, and let's see. And once again, 
going to be about midnight. couple of hours after midnight. Uh, hmm. This could be interesting. A lot of dice. That's okay. You're the Ms. You're the only one that got a one in that roll. So let's see. Feckish and Haig. As you're traveling along the river um, after passing the fork, about two hours after um, midnight, you both pick up a smell smell you don't like. Um, Fekish, you are given the order. You're behind Kaylee and Haig. So Haig, as you pick up the smell, you recognize it and you look back at the others to see if anyone else notices the smell of death. By death, I mean fresh blood, or maybe not quite so fresh, recently spilled blood. A couple of days rot and not, or... not quite the stench of, of, um, of rotting flesh, but you, you're, you, Hague in particular, are familiar enough with battle to say that, yeah, it smells like a battle has gone on somewhere around here within the past day. Okay, relay that to the team. And Fekish, oh. you pick up the smell also about the same time he does. So as Haig looks back, you kind of know what he's looking back at you for to see if anyone else yeah. is picking up on it. So, um, yeah, you, you can give him a head nod. You can ride up to him and discuss further. Um, you is can... it on the wind or just in the general area? It seems to be coming on the wind, um, and actually you are riding into the wind. Okay, so it's in front of us. Yeah, just both of us taking notice of it. I mean, if that's the direction we're going, that's the direction we're going, so we're aware of it, yes? Uh, I keep forgetting. Uh, hold on a second. Could we get a timestamp, please? Yes, you can. Okay. As it's described, the party will scent the odor of death sweet on the desert breeze. And it grows stronger as you continue northeast. As you continue forward, remember it's nighttime. 
moon is up but it's not providing a lot of light it's probably waning um waning crescent i'm uh, sorry waxing crescent um and so you see something up ahead maybe you know it's hard to tell distance again but probably somewhere around 500 to a thousand yards away and there are definitely um objects in the sand that based on your discussion to this point seems like they could be bodies it looks like it's probably a, a battle site up ahead so you guys going to approach it or circumvent it I mean, I think it's probably um, worth an investigation. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Um, Agreed. We should be cautious. Because um, yeah. we don't know who was fighting whom and who won and who lost and if they're going to be friendly to us. But um, And if they're still going to be around. But um, we should probably investigate. Uh, I will start creeping up to the area in cap because I'm in cat form, so I'm less likely to draw attention. Good call. So I will uh, slowly uh, stealth up. Or try to, at least. Okay. So you creep on closer. So I'm presuming you're just moving ahead of the pack. Uh, the, uh, uh, yes, so that way they don't get the camel in danger, just because they need to make a quick getaway. And, and again, you are moving into the wind, so you are down. Um, they are upwind from you. You are downwind from from the, this. And as you get close enough, especially you are in cat. Are you in cat form or in? The, yes, through? cat form. Okay. So um, especially being in cat form and having um, the advantages of panther eyesight and smell. Actually, I'm kind of surprised. Did you? No, Ms. Yeah, you rolled a one on your perception for some reason. So I'm just going to have to say you were distracted by something. I don't know. Uh, no. That was stealth, by the way, I rolled. No, no, no. When I did the perception earlier. Oh, yeah, sorry. I know that, sorry, was, I know that was stealth. When I did the perception check earlier, you got a one on that. <laughs> as you get close enough um how how far ahead are we talking 100 yards 500 yards how much are you advancing? Uh, oh nothing front where i know that my teammate's not gonna be uh showing themselves to whatever is there so i can uh see clearly what's uh going on okay so we'll say maybe about 200 300 feet max mm -hmm. What you notice first, and the rest will notice as they come up behind you, is that the dunes are stained with blood from a battle that must have raged here but a few hours ago. An army lies upon the churned up ground. The sun had baked their lifeless bodies and the remains of their mounts, so all is still warm. All is still, save the soft rustle of the wind across the sand as it drifts over the dead. A single humanoid figure apparently the only survivor of the carnage, crawls slowly and painfully among the bodies heading away from you and towards the north. Or northeast, I should say. Faction sure is. Throw some of your special on him. Yeah, I guess I will uh, try to close the gap, but hopefully uh, get close enough so I can uh, heal him, I guess. <clears throat> so you're, are you going to run up to him or are you going to approach cautiously? Uh, I'm going to try and close the gap as quick as I can, but hopefully not enough to... Uh, Called him uh, panic or notice me. Uh, 
Uh, let me see what range of this uh, spell is. As you get closer to him, you realize he's in pretty bad shape. He's he's crawling for his life. Okay, I'll obviously drop my uh, cap form because obviously he's going to find it really weird <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> ah! The fuck this cat doing? It's going to eat me. I'll call out in a comment. Uh, do you uh, need a healing assistant, my friend? He's he's gasping for breath. You may you can try, but my my time nears. I I will drop a. Uh... If I keep stop looking at the wrong sheet, that would help. Uh, I'll drop a bomb of the summer court on him uh, to see if that helps. Uh, I'll drop a two uh, d six worth. Hopefully that should help. I'll roll it in a thing, and then you can decide on how much if that enough to help stabilize him a bit. It does seem to stabilize him and comfort him, but it doesn't seem to um, to, to cure his wounds. He still seems to be succumbing, but he's a lot more comfortable. Uh, and he, he rests his hand on your shoulder and, tell, and tells you, You can try, but my time has come. But please listen to me. You, you must share my tale. Two days ago, we in the Air Lancers found the oasis of Akir north of here, burned to rubble. <coughs> we follow the trail of the attackers here, determined to have vengeance. No sooner had we arrived than over the western hills were seen clouds of dust and smoke. Suddenly, a tower of fire soared into the sky, taking the shape of a huge man. His voice shook the ground. Look upon the death of the world, ye mortals, he roared from the clouds. For I have been released from bondage and have come for my revenge. He raised his hand and the ground opened. Out poured his army of undead and we were slain. The warrior removes a medallion he is wearing and presses it into Mizram's hand. Then he gasps with his last breath. I beg of you, take this medallion of honor and show it to my sheik, Kasim. He is lord over the oasis of the white palm that lies to the north. Alas, the place is set. Tell him what happened to us, and he will reward you. Only he can stop this evil now. And with that, he passes. I will uh, gently run my fingers over his eyes, just in case his eyelids didn't uh, close during his last breath. And I will start slowly. Uh, I don't know. I mean, what is the burial ritual for these people? That's a really good question. I mean, these kind of people who like to be buried where they died on the spot or these kind of people where you need to bring them back home to their family for them to get proper burial that way. I personally know, but I don't know if uh, any of the, the characters or the uh, the party members actually know. I don't think we do. That was uh, not something we inquired about. Unfortunately, I'm just a cat. Meow. I did stick the uh, medallion into your inventory, Ms. Uh, yes, please. I did already. I was going to say, considering none of us are from here, we were teleported into the world to the area i doubt 
we would know unless Fekish has some sort of special background. No, he doesn't either. He also came from no, uh, not a clue. Not not the exact same region as you guys, but far far to the east of where you are. Um, I would say in general, though, just honoring some kind of um, burial ritual, whether you know you put him underground or make a cairn. I think you know just anything that he's not left out to the vultures would be dignified and sufficiently respectful. Anyone have mold earth? <laughs> but if you want, if you want to, you know, raise the question and ask someone native the next time you have a chance, um, that certainly would be consistent with storyline. I would have no objections. I will ask my party members, like, uh, what do you reckon we should do with uh, the body? Do you reckon we should uh, try and give them a burial, or do you reckon uh, we should? How many souls are we talking about here? Considering you're also running Redreth, I do have an option that Redreth would probably be privy to. Uh, that's what I was thinking too. <laughs> <laughs> Burn the body. Burn the body. Every doubt, fireball. Yeah, new come from orbit. Turn everybody to glass. I mean, that's actually not a bad option. To give them use fireball to give them a funeral pyre. That's not uh, a bad option. Due to I've heard him, of worse. Due to him saying uh, what killed him, would I know that it'll be? Uh, uh, I'll, let, I'll make a medical roll uh, first. Uh, would it be dangerous, sort of like to try and travel with a body due to the heat and also due to what they uh, said attacked them, like carrying disease? So it might be safer to just uh, give them a burial here and now. Um, all right. So let's see. Definitely easier and safer to bury them here. But that being said, you believe that if the Oasis of White Palm is within two days journey, which you really have no idea of knowing, that you probably do know of a method of wrapping them in cloth and some um, ad hoc um, embalming type situation, basically soaking a layer of fabric and alcohol and then wrapping another layer of canvas around that. You figure you could safely and not uncomfortably transport them for up to two days in this heat. Beyond that, it's probably going to become stinky and problematic. But you do think there, as long as it's not offensive, there is potential value in returning his body to his his family and his his. Um, he, he did refer to him as my my sheik. So yeah. The, there's very likely that the sheik will appreciate the return of his his tribe his servant whatever possible that they would be offended by it because you didn't honor proper traditions but you don't you'd say you you're gambling a little more that they would rather see their body than the find that he was left behind if you yeah. look at the contingency right, of our group right. as a whole you our... know we're outsiders Right, and doing our best as we can, you know, would be yeah. probably. I mean, it's going to be up to the individual whether or not, you know, if if this is the wrong thing to do, it's going to be up to the individual how much they hold you responsible. Yeah, okay, I'll 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 take the I'll take the punishment for it because I'll just be in cat form, so they can all just point to the cat. Mm -mm -mm. Well, we didn't want the cat um, to eat them. Yeah. Now this is just one body among many right yes yes very true but he also technically this might require an insight but i don't think it's sharing too much the fact that he survived to share the story probably will commend him or um es establish him as a hero or someone that the story needs to be passed on as opposed to just those who fought and died in the battle yeah, so I mean, they'll might... all be commemorated, but he's the hero who was able to tell us that you know what our danger was. He was able to it's yeah. a significance. Yeah. So they might want to give him a more important um, burial for memory. So it's memorial. possible, and yeah. you know, can't say whether or not it's expected, but um, you know, these are all possibilities that are running through the the party's collective consciousness. Uh, I will 
pass the information obviously onto the party and say, well, I think we should at least take him with us. Uh, I mean, I mean, if it's the wrong thing to do, I'll take the uh, full blunt to the blame. But the rest, uh, we should at least, if you think we got time, at least uh, try and dispose of the body by burning them, putting them in a pile and burning them. Just to let you guys know, I, uh, due to being a druid, I have no need to pick a person body clean when I die. Uh, that's not something I do. So if any of you want to loot bodies, I'll leave that, that side of thing to you lot. No, I think I'm on, I'm on board with respecting the dead. Okay. And um, any other activity or action um, before we move on? Um, so this is pretty much on the trail. Um, you had to divert a little bit to the north of the river um, after you picked up the smell. But I'd say it's definitely, okay. it's definitely within a mile of the riverbed. Okay. Um, I'm seeing that the Sand Voyager's Trail heads more north than the riverbed here. Yep. You um, accurate assessment. Let me open up the map a little bit. So I'm going to guess that the oasis of the white palm is the next just oh I see it just diverges a little bit. Okay. Not that we would necessarily be able to see that from where we are. Actually, um, remember the Sand Voyager's Trail is marked by those beacons that are placed, what, every five miles, which are relatively, uh, you, you can see one from the previous one in the daytime desert. Nighttime's <laughs> a little more dependent on the moon being up, but you, you can see the trail during the daytime. Right. Um, okay. So you might not know. So are we following? Well, yeah, so you're kind of actually following the trail to um, more so than the river in order to um, reach the battle plane. Right. That's what I was asking. Yeah, it's more on the trail. Okay. Um, so I guess we should continue following the trail unless we want to go back to the riverbed. Um, I mean, eventually the river will go past the um, oasis, will go past a couple of oases, but I think Akir is the first one we come to and it's apparently been um, destroyed. Um, Matt is, uh, no, that wasn't Dan. Wait a minute. Who just bounced out? Was that not Miz? Weren't me. No, nope, yeah, I see you're both in there. Alvi still joined. That's weird. Maybe he had a second connect. Yeah, he's Dan. You're definitely having some weird issues this morning. I think we're seeing you ghost. Hmm. And he probably can't even hear us now. No. I'm yeah, not. probably. Uh, Is he muted? He's muted. No, no, he just went off mute. Are you hearing <laughs> us? I hear you fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It seems you're like trying to have... figure out who's kicking out, right? Kicking in and out. No, I hear you guys. Yeah, well, I thought it was okay. you, but the last time we had someone bounce, someone just bounced like 30 seconds ago, but I see you're still here. So I'm like, who the hell bounced? But everyone's here. I figured out, I figured out what it is with me. Oh. Every time I walk outside of the house and disconnect from the Wi-Fi, because I'm using Wi-Fi calling a lot on my phone. Ah. If I disconnect from the ah. Wi-Fi, when it goes to cellular data, it cuts out all the audio. That so, yeah, that, 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 so that, I just, well, at least you know. <laughs> I just turned my Wi-Fi off, and now I'm just on cellular data, so I shouldn't cut out anymore. Okay, well, yeah, it helps, okay. to, know, it helps to know what it is, most definitely. All right, so 
the question is now, um, do we follow the Sand Voyagers Trail or do we follow the riverbed? Um, it sounds like both probably passed the um, Akir Oasis. Um, what I'm thinking is and, our best, did the guy who just died give us an indication with his hands, with his eyes, which path he's talking about the Afrit, whatever the Afrit destroyed? Because he said he, did he destroy the pool? He destroyed the, the oasis of the white palm, he said, right? No, so if he, he gave us any he destroyed, he destroyed the um, oasis of a chair, which is well, also marked as story on, the, goes, on the scroll map. Mm. As far as story goes, you know, they don't usually put those kind of details in there for kicks and giggles. I say if he gave us an indication with his eyes or his hands or whatever, or looked towards whichever the area is that the Afrit just buried let's go check that out that's kind of what i'm thinking how is our supplies you pretty much resupplied the camels when you left turbocar which was let's see up sixth you days ago um double checking hold on So yeah, so it was the evening of the 4th. It is now the 10th. So you've got about eight. Uh, no, wait a minute. Um, yeah, you got about eight to 10 days worth of food and water available still on the camels. Uh, okay. do, you, do you reckon we could salvage some uh, supplies what managed to spy from this tack, do you think? You wanna or do you just want to push on? You want to look around on the bodies and see if there's anything that's salvageable? I, I, don't, I don't want to loot the body, but I'm just uh, asking our uh, scout who has to think about getting us safely to places. What does she want to do? Um, We can take a quick look for, um, uh, you know, edibles. Um, but yeah, um, looting the dead is not a good idea, but um, resupplying um, with the food, if it's still good. Um, we, should we should have enough supplies to get to the oasis but i'm not sure depends on how fast we move well i've got to wrap the body up anyway uh to preserve it so whatever so that probably give you guys a little bit of time to look for if there is any food supplies here there might not be but it should give you enough time so ms you're kind of busy with tending to the 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 guy who passed in your arms yes basically um, but Varric actually points out, as you guys are all discussing about, um, looting the dead and whatnot, he looks around and pipes up and says, well, it may not be a good idea, but it looks like it's been done already. And as you look around and take a closer look at the bodies, you realize that, um, you know, they've been stripped of their armor. There's no gear next to them. Many have been left naked, um, and hewn. Um, someone has already gone through and done a lot of desecration here. Oh. There seems to be quite a bit of confusion too in terms of the aftermath. Right. Uh, does it does it look like because uh, you said undead? Do it look like undead, like uh, prints all over the place, like gone over the bodies? Strangely enough, no. Good question. Um. So who can can we tell with a closer examination? Um, can we tell who might have looted the bodies? 
I mean, was it just one person? Was it lots of them? Um, we're going to spend a little time doing uh, some investigation around here. Is there, yeah. Are they all? Are they all the same wounded? They, um, yeah, they are Usually all the same. Wounded. They are all the same wounded, but you can tell from the tracks around the, you know, the dead bodies and whatnot that those who did loot them obviously were living and not undead because they're they're leaving solid prints um some are actually they all seem to be wearing some kind of footwear so presumably they are human or humanoid um okay you notice that there's, they've been there's no points. other there's no opposition fatalities in other words if you have that many people fighting not everybody is going to survive from both sides see what i'm saying you would presume so, but um, it does occur to you that if they are undead, their bodies might have been reclaimed through other means. So they police their bodies. Espe especially as a cleric. You realize that undead would have, could have, depending on the nature of the undead, they could have died and just disappeared or, um, you know, tur turned to dust or possibly, even if they were an undead, it's possible that they may have chosen to bring their dead with them, whoever the other side was, so. Right, absorbed into their ranks. It's notable that you don't find any other members of the opposite side, but not entirely unexplainable. Okay. You definitely see possibilities. Now, what does seem to be rather interesting, though, that the party picks up on collectively from investigating and looking around, is that there does seem to be apparently two tr separate trails leading away from this carnage um the confused track of hooves and footprints is cut by a clear track of three ski runners that lead to the northeast but in addition to that there is a trail of burned stone and gnawed bones that leads off to the northwest Interesting. So with that in mind, and it being now three minutes to 11, I think we are going to call the session there to allow you guys to consider your options. Anything else you might want to do? Um, certainly let, you know, discuss in channel, or we can wait until the next time we meet as to, you know, discuss amongst the party which way you want to go. Um, ideally, we'll have a decision before the next session. So I'm, I'm, fully prepared for whichever route you guys decide to take but at this point you have an option you or to follow you see one trail going to the northwest and um of as as it says burned stone and gnawed bones or the three ski runners that run off to the northeast just slightly um counterclockwise of the path taken by the river and the sand voyages trail so if the San Voyages Trail is running at about 2.30, you would say that the ski runners run off at about 1.30, and the, the, the Trail of Carnage runs off at about 10.30 to 11 o'clock on the dial. Uh, just a uh, just quick question. Which, which track look like they lead more towards uh, the direction we need to go? Definitely the ski runners. Hmm. They they follow more closely to the river and the Sand Voyagers Trail and what you believe is the oasis of Akir. So the other you... one leads in a direction you have no idea what's off in that direction. Which direction does it lead off in? Uh, roughly about 10, 30, 11 o'clock on the, the, the clock dial. Okay. Cool. Well, on that note, I have guests that are arriving shortly, so I will say thanks for the round, guys. And you're, we'll you're such a socialite, John. I try. <laughs> He's loving yogurt. Catch you guys anyway, later. Anyway, th thanks for joining, Albie. Always love to have you. I'll, I'll give you a call probably tomorrow or something. Right up. And any last questions or com game-related comments before I stop the recording? No, I think it's... I think that's good. So we're... For 
the time being, we're set with the decision on which direction we're going to go. Yeah, the, the only thing uh, our scout might need to keep in mind is just keep an eye on our tracks, obviously, just to just in case they're yeah. either refugees or if they're enemies hiding within the ranks of the people we're trying to alert. Those are two <laughs> things to mm -hmm. think about. Yeah. Um, I guess the only comment left would be, oh no, that would be after the recording stops. All right. I will close off the recording and uh, that's the end of session 33.